lockdown gardeners. It's been too long. So nice to see you all again. Um, today I wanted to introduce you to Tom. So this is revisiting our lockdown tomatoes. Tomatoes from tomatoes from, from a couple of weeks ago. And uh, this is Tom. So here's the sole seedling from those seeds that we put in from the tomatoes. There were six in there and there he is, sprouting proud. You can see I've had to do a little bit of micro weeding in here because it was a uh, garden compost. So there were a few seeds in there that were not tomatoes, rogue seeds. Um, so yeah, I've just pulled them out. It's quite therapeutic doing weeding like that. And you can see on the other side, the chili seeds have actually done really well. We've got lots of chilies coming up there. Well, a few little things that are not supposed to be there, so we can weed them out. Seems just like having a massive garden. Um, so they're doing really well. It's the 16th today, so that is actually three weeks. It's quite a while, but it's chilly in here. You'll have seen me wearing that hat before. It's warmed up a bit, but it's still quite chilly. Um, once they've germinated, they don't mind the cold too much, so long as it's not going below about five degrees. But yeah, he's looking fantastic. Um, I just want to show you, I'm not showing off, but I just want to show you some of these seedlings that are a bit more advanced. So these are in our paper pots. These are tomato seedlings. It's a variety called Tigerella. So these went in a couple of weeks before Tom. Oh, I wanted to tell you why I called him Tom. I've named him after Captain Tom who's walking the length of his garden with his Zimmer frame, raising money for the NHS. So as of today, he got about four million, four million pounds for the NHS. Good old Captain Tom, pride of Britain. Anyway, here we go. So these seedlings are looking really strong. They're starting to make their true leaves. When a seed first germinates, the first thing it will do is to put out these seed leaves, which are quite simple looking, and uh, they are just like, little solar panels that open up and start off the seed growing. And they tend to sit like that for an awful long time. They'll sit looking like this for ages and ages and you think, oh, what are they doing? They're not actually doing anything. But what they're actually doing is using those seed leaves to feed the roots. And when they start to produce these, what are called true leaves, which have some actual form and shape to them, that means you can be sure that the roots underneath have formed properly. So they seed leaves first, then the roots, and then these true leaves come. So that means that they're at a point where you can start to transplant them, confident in the knowledge that the roots have developed underneath. Um, so I'm not going to do that yet with these. I think I might leave them in their paper pots because they've got such a lot of soil in there just to develop a bit better. So this now is definitely the time when you can be sowing all those tender plants that are going to go out once the risk of frost has passed. So last frost date officially in Dundee is about mid-May. So you can start to sow those seeds about six weeks before that last frost date. That gives you quite big plants though. Um, so we're now a month effectively before the last frost date. So it's definitely time to be getting those tender seeds in. This is on the assumption, of course, that you've got the gardening bug and you decided to order some seeds online. That would have been sensible rather than rootling around in your soup box, wouldn't it? Uh, so I've got a selection of the kind of things that you might be sowing at this time. We've got these beautiful bolotti beans, which the beans themselves are really gorgeous. so beautiful and the pods that come that grow eventually are absolutely beautiful uh, so I've got some uh, French beans these are a dwarf variety so they'll grow relatively small just a couple of feet high and they'll make loads and loads and loads of beans absolutely lovely and of course traditional runner beans these are climbing beans, so you need to have quite a bit of space outside for these. You won't be able to grow these inside. Uh, and very traditional. Hard to find in the shops. Really expensive when you do. Absolutely delicious. You can eat them straight off the, off the plant. You don't even need to cook them. 
and so prolific, they'll make loads. So worth getting those planted now. Um, as always, the eternal hunt for lockdown compost. I did the old uh, covered cut thing, so I've got some of my own hair here. There's quite a lot of grey in that, I haven't realised it was quite so bad. But I'm going to use that in the compost as well. Um, oh, let's see how the compost tumbler is doing. You know what, I think after three weeks we might actually have something usable there. That looks all right. We can still make stuff out, but it's definitely turning into a growing medium. So that looks really good. I think we could use some of that. And the alternative containers that we're going to do today are toilet rolls. I know you've all got lots of toilet rolls. Now we don't go through toilet paper very quickly for various reasons. Um, so I've only got a couple of toilet rolls there. Yeah, that's it, just those two, I'm afraid. But I did find this um, roll that had fabric or something around it. So this, despite the fact that it's absolutely enormous, we can, of course, cut this up down into kind of toilet roll lengths. And the best way to do that, please try not to slice your hand off when you do this, is with a bread knife. So once you've made the first cut, just keep on going around it until you've got that. There we go. I might cut and uh, cut the rest of those. And uh, so all we need to do is fill those with soil, whatever soil we're going to use. So there was that beautiful um, horse poo, which I think would go down the bottom. If we put a blob of that down the bottom of each of these, it'll kind of block the bottom, keep the moisture in, keep the soil in above it, and um, should deliver quite a lot of food to what we're going to plant in above. So that's just like an inch in the bottom of each tube. And then I'm going to use some coffee grounds. Actually, the problem I've found with the coffee grounds is that it really, really drains and dries out very, very quickly. So um, you do have to watch that you keep it watered. But we do have some pea sprouts coming up. I'll just show you them. There they are. See the little baby pea sprouts? So again, that's from the second, so that's a couple of weeks ago. But they are coming up, they're doing their thing. And I'm going to pop up with my homemade compost. We will see how that goes. So these will be brought on, these seeds will be brought on indoors until such time as we know there's not going to be any frost. So as I say, after the middle of May is traditionally the time. But in these days of global heating, we might find that it's actually in practice a bit earlier than that. So these can be sown a good three centimetres or so beneath the surface. I'll just place them in and then cover them up. 